Okay. Hi, everyone. I am, um, well, honestly, I'm supposed to be working on my feather levitation skills, uh, which I've been practicing for months now and still a little hit and miss. Like, so far, my best technique is <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so I'm also working on, I mean, you guys know how much I love scrying and um, like for me, this brings back such happy memories of when I was a child and my grandmother would teach me this. And then when I was um, 13 and my mom sent me off to live with gypsies in Greece um, as a punishment for misbehavior. <laughs> My family is a unique perspective on how we punish our children. Um, so anyway, one of my favorite scrying techniques, um, and as you know, scrying is like just looking at a crystal ball, and um, I'm going to be teaching this this coming Saturday in just a few days. I'm so excited. Uh, so one of, you know, you have techniques where you're looking into the ball to receive messages, but what I love to do is combine it with my favorite pendulum work and um, use the two together because you get this beautiful harmonic energy. So you guys, you can try this at home if you have, you know, even if you don't have a crystal ball like here. This one, it's like super heavy and it's got dragon pedestal. I love it. I've had it for years. But um, if you don't have a crystal ball, you can get um, a clear glass bowl, like a mixing bowl or a dessert bowl or something, and or even a, a glass water glass and fill it like halfway or two thirds of the way with water and use that. It doesn't need to be a crystal ball, although these are lovely. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the pendulum. Uh, I've had some people say to me they don't trust pendulum work because how do we know we're not manipulating it? I'm like, well, that's kind of the point, you know, that you empty yourself out and you invite divine essence to flow through you. To use the pendulum you know i mean there are different ways of working with pendulum and so where somewhere you are interactive you are influencing it but for this kind of you know messages from spirit obviously you want to get out of the way so i consider pendulum work like wonderful exercise if you want to practice for like channeling or being a divine conduit or like connecting with crystal clarity to messages, like what better than doing a technique where you know you need to get out of the way. So, um, hi everyone. It's nice to see people popping up here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a quick technique because I know some of you can't join us on Saturday, although if you can, you definitely want to, but if you can't, this is good practice. You can take a pendulum and listen, if you don't have a pendulum, grab a necklace. I've used car keys. One time I took my dog's collar off him and I was using, you know, Lord Snaggletooth's collar, but you can grab any necklace, anything that dangles, um, a keychain, whatever. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a formal pendulum. Um, if you get into serious work, it's nice to have a pendulum because you get like um, an energetic, relationship with them. I've been working with this pendulum for a long time and we actually have a really close rapport. So if you haven't worked with pendulums before, this is like old school, like people have been doing this since prehistoric ages. It's not new age, it is like the classic age. And um, you know, you talk to your pendulum, get a rapport. So I usually put my hand under it. That way I'm getting an energetic resonance all around. And, um, 
you know, there's different techniques. You can ask your pendulum, please tell me your yes. And most pendulums will go this way for yes, this way for no. You know, and that's normal. And you'll notice when I work with a pendulum, like I'll hold my hand still while I work with it. And, you know, I'll talk with my pendulum. Hi, pendulum, how are you today? You know, and I'll be like, hi, pendulum, how are you today? And it's like, and I almost hear it going, I'm fine, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm fine too, would you like to work? Yes, but let's play a little, like, we'll chat. And I'll, I'll actually hear the pendulum's voice in my head. Um, and it doesn't matter if I'm making it up or if the pendulum and I are talking or the pendulum is sending energy to me that my brain interprets that words. It doesn't matter, we're getting a report. So I'll work with the pendulum. One of my favorite things to do is to send love to someone, um, you know, someone that I love with the pendulum. So I'm going to practice this right now. And listen, you know, send it to someone who gives you permission to send love to them. Like send it to someone, you know, like a family member or a really, really close friend. Oh, you know what, Michelle? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so sorry that you lost your soulmate cat. I'm so sorry. And um, yeah, as soon as we finish this, let's see if we can hear anything from your cat. Okay. Um, so I hold it on my hand. And um, um, Michelle, do I have your permission to um, try to connect with your cat? Um, and so in this case, I'm going to send some love to, um, my childhood best friend, Kim Height, who, um, she and I were like best friends, like hardcore, um, and until we were like nine. Well, I was nine and she was 10 and they moved out of town, but we've always kept close. And now we're like hanging out together again and goofing around. Um, so we've been talking on the phone a lot lately. We're kind of working on a project together. So she's just like nonstop in my heart. She's like one of the most pure loving people I've ever met. So Kim, I know I have your permission because we love each other, but let's, yay, I got a heart. Let's, let's, ask to make sure okay oh and thanks michelle definitely all right so pendulum do you feel my love for kim and it's moving back and forth just a little bit it's very slight um i don't a lot of times my power does not feel the need to make the pendulum so strong you know so some people when they do the pendulum it's like whoa and other people like some of the most powerful pendulum healers I've ever met, it barely moves. The, the amount it moves has nothing to do with how powerful the connection is. It's just, you know, your connection with your pendulum at that moment and your frequency. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm going to like open myself up. I'm like flowing with energy. My root chakra is wide open and my crown is open and I'm, you know, just like inviting divine essence and love to come in and fill me and th flow through me and emanate from me. And my heart is wide open. All three heart centers are open and flowing. I did like a really good meditation before this. So just to be like wide open, like pendulum, help me send pure love to Kim. Can you do this for me? It's saying yes. And now it's going around in a circle. You see it? It's going around in a circle. Now I'm going to close my eyes because if I stare at it, I psych myself out. Um, and also like, I'm like, is my finger moving? Is this or that? When I close my eyes, like you guys who've seen me like move pinwheels and things like that, um, or practice my telekinesis skills. See, like when I close my eyes, I'm like so much more powerful than when my eyes are open because I get out of my head. Um, and that way I can just really get into the flow. 
So I am going to send love to Kim. Okay. Send love to Kim. And because my eyes are closed and I'm just purely flowing, and I'm about to sort of go into a slight trance state, so divine essence is taking over my body. And it will do what it will do because it's not me. I'm kind of allowing myself to move to the back and let, let it take over. Those of you can see auras may notice some colors like sifting in as I float higher and higher in love. Okay, let's send some love to Kim. You may notice my heart chakra opening super wide and bright. All right, I was a lovely little dose of friendship love for like someone who's been like my other half since I was like, I don't know what, like four, five. Okay, so whew, I feel so good. Like you guys know when you are sending Cool yellow on my left shoulder. Thank you, Michelle. That's um, um, I was working with some amazing healers today, and like portals were opening up, and like there's so much going on right now. I feel like my room is just crowded with beautiful divine angels and entities and beings and you know, cosmic, and don't worry, only good ones are permitted. Like, I set my parameters in advance, so I don't need to, like, waste time for you guys. Okay. So now, when you're scrying, um, there are several ways you can do it. One way is when you look in the crystal ball, you actually see things in the ball. Another way is you look in the crystal ball, it helps you kind of space out and stuff downloads into you. And another way, or you just get a sense of knowing or, you know, like the truth, like you guys know, you can know when it's like truth. The resonance of truth is not like anything else. It's a unique frequency. So when, when you are in truth, accept it always. The biggest issue people have with scrying is you start second guessing yourself. Um, and, you know, if you come on Saturday, we're going to get all into that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my two favorite techniques that I was raised doing this. So I'm like so excited to share with you. I'm going to space out staring into the ball while I'm also going to let my pendulum work. And... Um, And Michelle, thank you for your permission. I'm inviting your cat, um, your cat. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm, I need to scroll up because I forgot your cat's name. Um, Squeaky, oh, I love that, I love that. Um, so I'm gonna take a moment, this might be boring for you guys, or you know, just look at my energy. Okay, Michelle. Um, first of all, I got to tell you that you guys, these feathers I, I, that had I'd blown on my keyboard were actually moving on my keyboard. I wish I had a camera on that. So um, 
what's coming through, and I'm going to tell you what came through and then we'll go back in, is um, Squeaky's feeling very playful right now. Um, because there's like total joy and fun and like um, a oneness, just like happy times, like so happy. Um, Okay, there's some more messages that are going to come through, but first let me just explain this. Like, don't worry. Um, your cat is not in this physical plane right now. Your cat is completely up there, but your cat has already been through like the hospital time, the like re, you know, releasing, and and now it's almost like um just like light, almost like kittenish. Time, just fun, playtime, playtime. And um, I don't know if your cat had like teeth problems because um, I'm seeing te like showing me the teeth and they're all like beautiful and sharp and like white and fangy and, and um, you know, so it's a good time. This is a good time. It's like a happy regeneration goodness um, time. And um, and there's another message like, uh, I was told to give you this reassurance, this absolute reassurance that everything is good. And um, your cat's like watching over you, but your cat's like, you know, you got this. So you don't need me there right now. I'm like, playing i'm having fun i'm like stretching and pouncing on things like i've got my little friends it's really really cute um and just so uh whole that's uh, what i keep hearing like i'm whole i'm complete um and like so energized and Okay, the feathers are blowing across my computer again. <laughs> oh yeah, and then my pendulum's like swinging that way. Okay, all right. Um, you and your cat have a soul contract relationship. Your cat has been with you in other past lives. Now, don't be jealous. You're not your cat's only human, but you are like a favorite human um no more pain no more pain like absolute wholeness and joy and you two have shared a lot of lives together your cat loves going into life with you and your cat is very proud i'm, I'm seeing like a like a preening kind of move very proud of how much um he she because it's been different ways in different lives has been of help to you in your lives. Um, and you do have a close relationship, a close multi-life relationship. And um, Okay, you see that I am not moving my hand. That that's all your cat. All right, your cat um, says that the two of you can meet in meditation, like in spirit journey. Um, not just yet, because your cat's like you know, kind of getting everything back together. Um, oh, cool. So you have, okay. Um, your cat's like, okay, but like, your cat's gonna start communicating with you more actively to help you with your communication skills and also for fun. <laughs> Um, and then 
it's not soul contracted for the two of you to be together again in this life. But if you want to be, if it, you know, if, if like the two of you are having fun with rapport, your cat can come back to you in this life and don't worry. It will be, it, I'm going to tell you when my cat Maddie died a while ago, um, his spirit stayed with me for a few months and then, um, to make a long story short, he finally like arranged everything so he felt comfortable leaving. And um, he said, I gotta go do my healing, my stuff. You're not gonna see or hear from me for a while, but I will be coming back. And then months later, he started coming back in my meditations and greeting me. And, um, and then one day, and we're having a lot of great conversations and he was actually teaching me so much. And then one day he said, okay, I got to go, but I'm going to come back into your life. And the next time you see me, I'm going to look like this. And he showed me an image of him as a tiny white kitten walking right towards me with like one paw up like that, looking right at me. And then he's gone. And I was like freaking out uh, because the last few times he'd been with me twice before in this life and both times he came to me um like as a rescue later in life so i'm like oh my god he's going to come as a kitten i was in total panic mode like what if what if oh no i was hitting every shaman i knew every card reader every like every spiritual person every message giver i knew like how do i make sure and they're like i was driving all my friends crazy i'm like does this mean that his mom is pregnant now or does it mean she's giving birth now does this mean like when's he going to come into my i was like oh my god i drove everyone insane and then a weird and everyone's like telling me hey it's a soul contract don't he already told you like chill out chill out i'm like no ah. and then like i was in a um uh, a mediumship skills class and we're doing readings for each other and so i'm giving this partner it's our first reading and he says to me i don't know how to explain this to you it's a guy i'd never met him before i didn't know anyone in the class he said i don't know how to tell this to you but it's like a cat is coming through to me and he's like an orange cat but he's like a white cat and he's saying don't worry i'm coming <laughs> and i was like okay and then another time i'm walking down the street and this young man walks up to me and he's like excuse me miss i am so sorry this is weird but i'm a psychic medium and there's someone who has a message for you and they're really like adamant i'm like that's perfect yes um i i accept your message they said your cat is coming for you <laughs> I was like, okay and like people were doing like every reading i got like People who didn't know me were all telling me this. And then one day I was, um, I, I used to have an organization that helped get um, uh, stray dogs or, you know, rescue dogs to become service dogs for uh, special needs youth. So I was looking through, there's a family that wanted to get a, a puppy for their child. And so I was looking through Lost Dog Stray Cat and I accidentally clicked on kitten instead of puppy. And up popped a picture of a little white kitten, like this, I mean, sorry, like this, walking right towards the screen. It was the exact image that Donovan, or that Maddie had shown me. So we uh, went that day, we got him, and uh, Donovan, the albino Maine Coon cat, has been Maddie's next incarnation in this life. But then it was really frustrating because like I had such a close relationship with Maddie and um, Donovan was a kitten. It took him years to get even close to, like he's only now beginning to get to that, the beginning of where he had been when I had met him before. So I, had, I was like, oh, I love you so much, but I miss you the way you were before. So I felt like a horrible person had to like get over that. So, um, you know, our animals, they can come back. And just like us, they incarnate. Some animals incarnate as unique individuals, but they're always more connected to their collective 
than most humans are. Uh, some animals are an element of a collective. So while they do have their unique life, you know, they're more, you know, part of the hive. Having said that, the other day I was watching a cricket playing and I've never like, it never occurred to me that crickets would play, but I was watching, it was like on a leaf and it jumped from the leaf to a blade of grass. And it, like it, this finger, it's a cricket and it's like the blade of grass. And, and then it jumped from the blade of grass to a clover head, like a little clover blossom. This was actually September, so not the other day. And it was bouncing and then it jumped to another blade of grass. And, and I was like, wow, I guess there's more individual persona to little bugs and insects than I had given them credit for, you know, shame on me. But I can tell you the animals that we connect with, um, like dogs and cats, horses, you know, goats. I love goats. We had them when I was a kid. Uh, chickens have unique personas and they go through their incarnation cycle, but it's for, it's a little different than for us. So, um, so will he come back as another cat? He will come back if you want. Um, he'll be his own unique persona, but as he ages, you'll see, you know, and the energy is there. Just like um, when you do a past life regression, which, you know, like, I'll go back to a past life where I was like a near do -well or a pirate or, you know, a cutthroat. It's not going to be the same persona of me in this life. But the essence, the frequency is there. Like there is certain inalienable traits that go to every single life because your essence is your essence. It's just how you're expressing it in this situation or that. Um, okay, so let's see if there's anything else from your cat. He says, when you um, feel more harmonious in your heart towards him, when you can be a little more, uh, you know what they call emotionally neutral, like just going forward with um, a state of joy for the moment, it'll be easy for him to come and join you like when you're in meditation or sleeping. Um, but he's telling you, don't feel any pain. Don't feel any sorrow because it's all good. It's all good. And he wants to get back to like chasing his tail. And he's like using, I, I don't understand this. I don't, but he was saying like he's chasing a tail and I didn't get it. Like he's talking about being a bobtail cat. So I'm not sure if he's talking about a past life. He had no tail or a future life he's thinking of no tail. But at the moment, he's got a fluffy tail and he's having fun pouncing on it. Um, and like pouncing and then jumping up and like jumping in a circle and pouncing again. So I'm not sure what that means or where it comes from, but um, he's, he's really happy and he's like looking forward to your reconnection on any level but he wants you to feel joy um and at the moment he's working on his divine masculine energy so i'm not 100 percent sure like if squeaky was a male or female in this life or what um but you know none of us incarnate one gender all the time um okay <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. And um, uh, so, yeah, this Saturday in the um, com above the comment section in the description of this video, I have the links to our event at Lotus Wellness Center in um, uh, Manassas, Virginia. But um, Uma Alexandra Bipat and uh, Mary Phelan of Telepathic TV and Psychic TV and um, Rob 
oh my god rob i forgot your name i'm so sorry but he and and uma uh rob pritchett um each of us uh we're each psychic mediums um rob and mary are amazing psychic mediums for people who have passed rob and uma rob and uma are amazing psychic mediums for people who've passed Mary and I are both psychic mediums, but we usually, like, we naturally go to a higher frequency. So, like, when I connect with someone who passed, it's not about details of their life so much as the soul contract and what they're doing next and where they're going and eternal relationships. Um, so uh, we're teaching a class on techniques for connecting with spirit, and it's going to be each of us with our perspective. So I immediately said, oh my God, I want to do this crying. I'm also going to bring my Tesla ball, which is, you know, like looks like an electrical lightning storm on the inside, which is great for interdimensional scrying. Um, and uh, so, um, so you're welcome to join us if you can. Uh, if not, you know, I'm, as some of you know, I'm setting up my own online mystery school um, so that people can access all of these classes in an affordable way out of the comfort of your own home. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Well, thank you all, and um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And much love to everyone. Bye. And Pendulum says bye also. Bye.